Hey all, welcome to ShareTrek. This is Raj here. Many of you requested me to make a video on caribou biosciences. To be honest, I almost ignored caribou completely in the last so many months as it was such a boring stock. In fact, I remember reading in some prominent magazine like watching caribou is like watching paint dry. It was that boring. And um, nothing was happening out there. However, in the last two days, the stock has jumped big time and with huge uh, uh, trading volumes. And uh, I think that it's worth having a look again. And on July 6th, it jumped around 45.6% to touch $6.50. And then on the 7th of July, the very next day, it jumped a further 21.8% to touch 7.26. So if you add 45.6 and another 21.8, so it's almost 70% jump. So, um, uh, I mean, if, if the compounding factor. So I think it's time for us to take a closer look uh, on this stock. But before we proceed, please consider subscribing to the channel if you have not already done so, and uh, it will help the channel big time. So let's get started. <music> Welcome back, friends. Caribou Biosciences has a great pedigree, as you guys know. It comes from the lab of Jennifer Durna, and the current CEO, Rachel Horowitz, is also a protege of uh, Jennifer Durna, who chose to be in business instead of getting into academics. Caribou last reported its quarterly earnings on May 9, 2023, and it's next expected to report its quarterly earnings on 31st of August. Therefore, the jump in prices, I think, is not related to any earnings-related stimulus. Next, I don't think they have any therapy ready for monetization, so that can be ruled out. So first, let us get a quick summary of where they were in the last quarter and look at the latest news and see if we can pick up any reason for the jump and also to um, get a sense of what would be the durability of the increase in price. Is it going to be a, a, a price that's going to be sustained at higher levels going forward or is it likely to come back down? So that's the objective of my exercise. So if we were to look at the previous report, the key highlights from their last earning report, uh, which came out somewhere on 9th of May, was uh, that they have $291 million cash and cash equivalents and marketable securities in their balance sheet as of 31st March 2023. And according to the company, they felt that uh, this was sufficient cash uh, for with the current operating plan that they have to take them all the way into 2025. So cash is not an issue for them. At the same time, it's not a stimulus at this, at this stage. The second thing that came out in their quarterly report was that CB010 antler phase one trial uh, that they were uh, that was going on. Uh, they said that they were enrolling second line uh, LBCL uh, patients in uh, dose expansion, and their plan was to report the dose escalation data in second quarter of 2023. We have entered second quarter, and I'll check to see if I can find a positive catalyst here. The third point they had was that they said that for uh, CB011 camouflage uh, phase one trial. Uh, they were enrolling uh, uh, RR uh, MM patients, that is a refractory uh, uh, multiple myeloma, at dose level one. So nothing else to see here. I don't think there is anything great to report there. That could kind of justify such a huge price increase. The fourth point they said in the quarterly report was that uh, end application for CB012 to treat uh, refract and relapsed AML uh, planned for H2023. We are in H2 now, so I will check to see if I can find a positive catalyst here uh, that can justify such huge jumps in prices. And uh, next, scanning the news is what I would like to do to uh, look at all the points that we mentioned earlier that I want to check on. So uh, here is what I found in the news items. It seems that CEO Horvitz and her team invested years of research into inventing the next generation CRISPR technology based on hybrid RNA DNA guides, uh, which is called as CHRDNAs, pronounced as Chardonnays, uh, that direct precise genome editing. Caribou is now deploying the Cas12A Chardonnay technology to carry out high efficiency multiple edits, including multiplex gene in insertions to develop CRISPR edited therapies. First off, this gives them an improvement over uh, vanilla CRISPR-Cas9, which had its own problems, which all of us are absolutely familiar with, and an additional intellectual property that they can license. So at this point of time, many uh, researchers must be using Chardonnay, uh, and uh, they, if they come up with anything viable that can go into the market, they'll have to first pay license fee to Caribou Biosciences, so that's an intellectual property they have. Second, they now have a focus on being allogenic, 
and a focus on oncology. Focus is always very, very good because it helps to optimize and realize synergies. Uh, that's another positive for caribou biosensors in my book. Now coming to what I think is an exciting aspect of their CB010 therapy, uh, which is targeting non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, is that the first big thing uh, to see is that it's allogenic CAR T therapy. And the second best thing about that is that it has a PD-1 knockout that has yielded better than uh, autologous CAR T, uh, uh, even at low dose levels that they are using right now, just to assess safety. So let us unpack this whole thing. You all know how, how much of a fan I am of allogenic as opposed to autologous. Autologous needs a lot of infrastructure uh, closer to the patient to uh, harvest all the cells and then transport it from the patient to the lab and then it has to be processed and multiplexed and sent back. And also because the pa patient is not well, the cells may be weak and may not be as potent for the therapy. So that those are the things that I find about uh, uh, autologous. Now coming to allogenic, it comes from healthy uh, donors, so the cells are very potent. And um, uh, the, the main thing for uh, uh, allogenic uh, is the uh, host versus um, graft uh, uh, disease or rejection. So uh, those things need to be tackled. Now, it seems that um, Caribou Biosciences has been able to do that, and uh, they are in a good position uh, with their allogenic therapy, and allogenic therapy will be much more easily available because it's going to be off the shelf, so the entire marketing cycle can replicate exactly what we have right now uh, for regular uh, medicine because these therapies will be uh, available off the shelf, so the lead time between a patient re a doctor requesting it for a patient and it being available is going to be minimized. So the time taken for autologous uh, during which the patient can deteriorate further, that aspect is also avoided. So those are all positives that we can see. However, we still have the same conditioning uh, uh, environment that we have, and it's a level playing field for everybody because everyone has to go through the same conditioning until we have a gentler conditioning that comes through the genomic field. Now, coming back to the PD-1 knockout, which is again a very interesting feature out here. I would like to explain what I understand of PD-1 uh, so that um, you can get a uh, understand the significance of what has uh, been accomplished here by Caribou. PD-1, which stands for Programmed Cell Death Protein 1, is a protein that plays a crucial role in the field of genomics and immunology. It's primarily known for its function regulating the immune response and maintaining immune homeostasis. Uh, homeostasis. PD-1 is a receptor protein expressed on the surface of certain immune cells, particularly T cells, uh, which are a type of white blood cells involved in immune responses. PD-1 uh, interacts with its uh, ligands, uh, PD-L1, programmed death ligand 1, and PD-L2, which are found on the surface of other cells, including cancer cells and ant uh, antigen-presenting cells, APCs, such as dendritic cells. The primary function of PD-1 uh, is to inhibit uh, or downregulate uh, immune responses, that, uh, thereby preventing excessive immune activity and potential autoimmunity when PD-1 interacts with its ligands, particularly PD-L1. It transmits inhibitory signals to the T cells, resulting in reduced T cell activation and dampening of the immune response. This uh, mechanism is known as immune checkpoint regulation. In the context of genomics, the interaction between PD-1 and its ligands has important implications. Abnormalities in the PD-1 pathway can lead to uh, dysregulated immune responses and have been associated with various diseases including cancer and autoimmune disorders. For instance, some cancer cells can exploit the PD-1 pathway to evade the immune system's attack by expressing high levels of PD-L1, which then interacts with PD-1 on T cells, leading to T cell exhaustion and immune evasion. Therefore, targeting PD-1 or its ligands with immune checkpoint inhibitors has become a problem promising approach in cancer immunology. With that background, in summary, I would say that PD-1 is a protein that plays a crucial role in regulating immune responses and maintaining immune homeostasis, and its function in genomics relates uh, to its involvement in immune checkpoint regulation, which has significant implications in cancer and autoimmune disorders. So with this um, in your mind, you can understand the significance of how uh, Caribou has uh, positioned uh, CD010. So, uh, even though this is a great development, I don't think this accounts for the jump in the share prices because this information came out uh, in an uh, interview that uh, CEO uh, Rachel Horwitz uh, gave on June 8th, 2023. So the price should have gone up at that time itself. So that's not the case. However, uh, even though it did not move much needle, we as investors should remember that's a very good positive 
and uh, it's worth noting that uh, caribou has Im improved its uh, ip and what actually mo moved the needle in my uh, opinion uh, happened in early july uh, even though the company is uh, expected to post a loss of 49 cents per share in the next quarter and um, I think its revenues are expect, uh, expected to be around 3.38 million, which again was pegged at 19.5% below the previous quarter. Uh, everything was set for uh, Caribou to keep going down, uh, lesser revenues and, um, and that kind of uh, uh, expectation. Uh, and uh, suddenly something happened. And what happened was uh, Pfizer decided to invest 25 million by means of equity purchase in Caribou at $5.55 per share in line with the securities purchase agreement dated 29 June 2023. And friends, as retail investors, we did not see this coming. If we had seen this coming, we would have stocked up on uh, Caribou and then sold it uh, uh, soon thereafter when the prices went up. So now Pfizer owns 4.69 million shares of Caribou and that is out of circulation because that's going to sit in the books of Caribou and it's not going to be traded in the market. In the market, demand and supply determines the price. So. There's a temporary imbalance. The average daily volume of caribou is around 10.29 million, uh, which is based on a 10-day rolling average. So now coming to my thoughts on the price situation. Firstly, the shorts are going to be in a bit of a panic. So let's quickly have a look at uh, this particular chart. I've got two, um, uh, two uh, data points out here. One talks about the volumes. The other talks about the shorts actions. So as you can see here in the chart, the shorts are at 15.5% of the uh, overall float. So that's where they are. And I, I think that uh, the short uh, holders are going to be in a bit of a panic momentarily and may want the stock price to come down so that they can escape their positions. I personally think that profitable caribou holders who have been holding caribou for a long time uh, and who are seeing other opportunities elsewhere would probably like to book some profits and uh, move the money and uh, diversify their risks. And they may slowly decide to take advantage of the stronger prices and um, sell their holdings uh, progressively, or they may decide to sell calls, and that will eventually bring the price down. Why do I say that? Well, we have the example of CRISPR Therapeutics, which has a large institutional holding, and despite that, its share price has dropped. Uh, it's dropped significantly enough, even though exacel monetization, uh, monetization is just around the corner. So even if the shares of uh, Caribou sits in uh, Pfizer's vault for a long time, the demand and supply equilibrium will arrive, as the market will still be sensitive to higher price and will moderate the volumes. Um, so that's that's my expectation that the price will suddenly go up and then come down we have seen this happen with beam therapeutics as well we have seen this happen with uh, uh, bluebird also so these kind of things uh, do happen the overall environment right now is a bit choppy so i think that this is not a permanent uh, jump in the price it's not a permanent uh, higher level of uh, uh, caribou stock in my opinion so if I held Caribou, this is my personal opinion, not financial advice, I'll sell some calls. Uh, if I want to maintain the position, I'll sell some calls in order to uh, book some profits and bring down my um, average cost of holding uh, Caribou. So that would be my strategy. I'll definitely not be buying at this point of time because uh, monetization is further away and uh, we'll have to see uh, what the space holds further. And we need to get more information about what exactly Pfizer has in mind uh, is it going to partner with Caribou Biosciences on specific uh, uh, therapies that it wants Caribou to work on? Or is it is it just going to be a stakeholder there? Maybe they take over Caribou at a later date. I don't know what the intentions are. So we need more information for that. In the absence of more information, I think the share prices are going to start coming down again. Uh, so that's my uh, personal opinion, not financial advice. Please do your own due diligence. Uh, please put in the comments what you think about Caribou Biosciences. Do you think this is exactly why the prices have shot up recently? And if so, do you think that the prices will remain elevated going forward? Or do you think it's going to drop down? Do you have Caribou in your portfolio? How long have you been holding? Have you made any profits or are you in the red? Are you going to sell some calls? Please let me know. It will be interesting. That's all for today, my friends. I'll catch up with you again in the next video. Bye for now.